the normal sports car companies aren't, they're purebreds. And they're looking at themselves as purebreds. And they're not really looking at this, this environmental situation. And we are. We feel that this is an opportunity very possibly to make a new brand name. <clears throat> the era of, of transition has started already and we're going to be part of it. In 12 months time, our goal is to have one running prototype and one complete show car that is absolutely exactly what we are going to to sell to the marketplace. So there's actually only two models for the next 12 months. And the first model that, that we'll be running around, okay, actually will be a transition into our next phase where we, where we will be doing crash testing and uh, high speed testing and so on to where we actually turn the prototype into a real car. We have, um, we're going to be producing approximately uh, the middle 40s per month and I think we need 18 cars per month to break even. So it's, it's profitable. Okay, the actual production facility, okay, now the prototyping is in Wisconsin, okay, but the actual production right now, we have uh, a couple people that are actually going around and, uh, and really scouting to determine where is the best place for us and for our company. Where are we going to get the biggest bang for the dollar? The end of next month, there will be 26 employees. And in actuality, there will be, uh, for production, there will be approximately 50, or just, just a little bit less than 50. There's going to be some areas that will be outsourced. I mean, the, uh, there'll be some sub-assemblies that we don't want to deal with. And, uh, but it's very important for us to really control certain things. Uh, we are not going to outsource things like the chassis or suspension, things that are extremely the foundation of the car. Um, my, now the body might be um, uh, outsourced somewhere, but the, but the assembly, the final assembly, will not be outsourced. We want we want to control that so that when the car leaves our premises, it's exactly what our we car want to. was designed to be a primary car. It's exotic but it's a primary automobile. So it has the luggage capacity to accommodate cross country. The technology that's available right now, there's basically two types of, of hybrids. You have a series and you have a parallel. We are using the parallel. Okay. In a series situation, you have the internal combustion engine is actually your primary and you have your, your electric uh, component is actually supplementing the power to it. But, but it's really the internal combustion. In a parallel system, you have your electric that can run by itself you have your internal combustion engine that can run by itself or they can run together. So in a situation where you have, uh, especially in city driving, depending on of course how heavy your right foot is, uh, you can start off in electric mode and actually stay there for, for a considerable amount of time and consequently um, you're not really using any gas consumption at that time. So your, your gas mileage is increasing. But at the same time, when you really need a lot of power, now all of a sudden both engines go in together so your performance is, is greatly enhanced. And, and our car is very light. It's important to us to, to keep it light. It's, this is a 2200 pound automobile. And a car for high speed is very aerodynamic. It's very, we feel that, that is the best way of going now. Things can change by the time we're done with our, with our prototyping. Because that part of the uh, actual car uh, is still can still change very quickly to us as long as it meets our criteria. A lot of today's designs you're noticing that the uh, belt line, the sill is getting higher and higher and you're starting to, you know, it's starting to get very harder to look out the side and we wanted to prevent that. We wanted, we wanted to create our own design. We wanted to make sure we, all the shortcomings that we addressed. Thanks Joe. Okay, thank you.